Hello, in this video, we're going to demonstrate the basics of creating a C-sharp class. We're going to use Visual Web Developer 2010, and we're working with an ASPX file called classexample.aspx. The ASPX is structured to have a code behind file, which um, is where the actual C-sharp code lives for that page. And as you can see here on the C-sharp code, in the class definition, uh, we have what, what is provided whenever you create a class in Studio, which is the default class structure as well as the initial page load event handler. Page load is always given to a person when you make a page in Studio because that handler is so useful. That is the point in time when any web controls that have been defined for the page are available for use and manipulation in code. Before that event in the light cycle you have events like initialization. In that event you can't interact with any of the server controls. There are other events as well, but they have specialized purposes. Load is intended, it's sort, of, it's sort of like the start point of the program for the page, that everything is available for you to interact with uh, the page and its capabilities. So what we're going to do is look at defining a class, as we said before. And to do this, I'm going to begin by creating a class very similar to the class you see here but it's not going to be um, specialized and inheriting from a actual web page namespace. It's going to be just a basic generic c -sharp class. And I'm going to call this public, uh, meaning it's available um, to anything that would perhaps invoke this class. Um, public, let's say uh, student, and then I use an open and curly brace to define the code block for that class. And uh, of course it would help if I use the actual uh, class keyword to indicate that student is a class. And we've actually just defined a class. It can't do anything, but we can actually invoke this class or create an object based on it. I can uh, create a variable based on this class. So I could use a data type of student now, and I could call it my student if I'd like. And the key issue here now is I need to use the, the new keyword. Without the new keyword, this class is useless. It would only ever have a data type of null or a value of null. It, it wouldn't be able to do anything in our code. So I actually have to create a new instance of class student. And I use open and close parentheses. And um, by so doing, and I'll, I'll set a breakpoint on that line, um, I'm actually creating a class. Meaning an instance of a class that could be interacted with in code. With this breakpoint defined, you can see how we already have a variable now identified by the program called myStudent, but its value is out is set to null. So being null, it's useless, and that's because this line of code hasn't run. We're at the point of running this line of code when we when the breakpoints hit. So for my debug menu, I'll choose step into, which takes me past the line of code, and myStudent is now initialized. It's no longer null here but it has no methods or properties, it's next to useless. But the basic principle holds where I've actually created a class. So my next move is to define something to make this class useful. So to work with a student in code, this might be a case where um, I accessed a database and I pulled back student data and I want to create a class called student so I could work with that data in a special way in my program. It's just a hypothetical situation. So the first thing I would do is define some properties for this student or, or settings for that class that make it unique to that given student. So that would be achieved by first defining some local variables to store that data. So um, let's just make a comment here and we'll put uh, local variables for the class. And um, I can use a private statement for my variable definition. So I would actually put, and it's defined like a C sharp variable other than the use of private. So I would put private string, and I'll use an underbar to uh, remind myself that this is a variable um, instead of a property or method later on. And I'll, I'll call it private string first name. And then I'll have another one called private string last name. And then let's have an integer just for something different. I'll make a private int under bar age. And um, the next thing I'll do is actually define a um, property handler for age. So what this would be is a way that someone who invokes this class, makes a new instance of it, 
can interact with that property. They can set its value to something or they can read it back out again. But I need to put the code in place for that to happen. And the way that that's built is now that I have my, my little variable and I use an underbar to distinguish it, I actually uh, create what's called a property handler. And I use the keyword public, meaning it's available to someone who creates this class to work with. And I would actually use a data type again, public int, but I'm going to change the name a little bit to make it a little more human readable when I work with my class, public int age. And I can define what's called getter and setter settings for that property. So you can make um, a get setting, which makes it possible to read value out. If you only have a get setting and not a set setting, it's a read only property. And so what I would do is use the return keyword here, like you'd see in a function. Oh, but I forgot. When I'm, when I'm defining this, uh, what I actually have to do is also define the keyword get. And then I put uh, curly braces after it to make a code block. And um, I need a closing curly brace for that property or it'll cause errors. And then in the get statement, um, what I do is I type return. And I use the name of that variable from up above. I use underbar age. So we now have a read-only property called under return age. So I'm going to play with that property. I'm trying to do this gradually so I can test as I make the code. If you try to write all your code and then test it all at once, you're due for a ton of headaches. It's a lot better to do this slowly and gradually, add one thing at a time and test it. So now what I'm going to do is um, I have my student defined, and I'll take away the breakpoint, and I'll define an integer um, called student age. And this is this integer is defined inside the page load event, so that's where it resides. And um, I'm not going to set it to anything in that line, just to make it simple. But now I will. I'll put student age equals my student. Now watch what happens. When I hit the dot character, I now have an age property. I didn't have that before. And I use my open and close parentheses. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm wrong. I don't. I don't use my open and close parentheses. I just call the age property. So let's run this code. I'll set a breakpoint on that line. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm getting. I'm actually um, debugging now. I forgot that. And that's why I got a breakpoint. Well, that's something you might encounter yourself. I'm glad it happened to me. Um, it'll let you type the code if the settings are allow it, but you couldn't necessarily do anything like set a breakpoint like I just did in this gray bar on the left. So now, when I run this one more time, it's going to go right past creating my new student object that again I define myself. And it's going to jump down to my breakpoint. Nothing visible on the page yet. We're just playing in code. And we, you can see we have our um, student age default set to zero, which is what you will, you'll get with an integer. Um, it is all, it's going to be defaulted to zero. So um, now when I step into my code, um, what it's saying is it's going to avoid stepping into the class code itself. Um, then it's set to the property of zero, which is kind of hard to see because we haven't done anything with it, anything fancy. So I'll stop this again. And now what I'm going to do is something a little different. I'm going to add a line of code. And I'm going to work with this value. I'll put my student and I'll use the age property and I'll set it equal to 40. And I'll save it and run it. And I got a build error. And what it's saying is, when I hold my mouse, that it's a read-only property. And for, it surprises you at first until you remember that we only defined a read-only property. We defined a get statement. We, we're, 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 we're receiving what we build. We haven't given it any other powers than to read out a read-only age. We can't set it yet. So we, we can solve that by defining what's called a set statement. And I'll make sure I'm not debugging this time, and I'm not. It always helps to learn from one's mistakes. And I'll put set, and I'll use an open and close curly brace. And now what I'll do is set the value of my variable under bar age equals, and what I'll do is use what's a uh, conventional capability for a setter of value. And that's just something you do for any set statement. You, you just have value to, regardless of the data type. So now when I try to run my code, I won't get that error about it being read only.